It's going to be 72, out, 72 degrees inside the sanctuary, so I'll, I'll keep it brief. Um, when you look around Montana, in every town, and you see it on billboards on the highway, and you see it in PSAs on the television, and you hear it in PSAs over the radio, the entire state seems to be mobilized, every ounce of government power, every tax dollar that can be spared, every effort on a local and statewide effort to, to stop the spread of COVID-19. And whether or not that's necessary aside, I want to point out that as of this morning, there was 1,152 deaths to COVID statewide since this pandemic began. And there have been roughly 1,500 abortions since the pandemic began which means that Planned Parenthood is a bigger killer in the wow. state of Montana right. wow. than COVID-19. Yeah. What that means is our greatest threat is not a virus that has come from China, but it's a virus that's called sin that is eating up Americans. Right on. Yeah. Right. We think that it's okay to take the life of someone just because they're not wanted by us personally, as though they're not wanted by someone else. Um, as we talk about social justice, or those on the other side often talk about social justice, most of the time, as you've noticed, it's things that are not social, like stealing from people, right. redistribution of wealth. Right. That's not social, that's antisocial. And it's not justice, it's injustice. Right on. We are the original social justice warriors Come on. because we want the unborn to live. Yes. Right. We have to begin to talk about what abortion does, and we should be training our young people early. And our elected representative should be an example of someone who will actually communicate out in the light what happens there in the dark. When my daughter was five years old, I took her to the Richmond County Fair, and they, for some reason, set the pro-life booth right next to the Democratic booth. Yeah. Imagine that. So we're serving in the pro-life booth, and they have these little images, these little, these little figures of fetuses, babies at different stages of development. And I couldn't help myself, so I, I took one of those, those models of an unborn child, and I took my five-year-old daughter to the Democratic booth, and I said, would you, I'm trying to teach my daughter about civics. Would it be okay? Can you share with my daughter why you think it's okay to kill a child like this inside their mommy's tummy? And the woman's eyes got as big as saucers. And she looked at my daughter and she says, honey, we don't believe that. And I said, now don't lie to my daughter. I, I got it on my smartphone. I'll pull it up what your platform is. You do believe that. And by sitting on that side of the aisle, that's what you support, whether you like it or not. And then I said one final thing. I said, shame on you. The next day, the fair board manager came to me with a posse behind her. She enlisted a couple people. And they said the fair board discussed this and said, you're no longer allowed to talk to people about abortion at the fair. And I said, well, I got news for you. The Bible tells me to preach the full counsel of God's word. Come on. Among all nations. That includes the county fair. So go get a restraining order from the sheriff and tell me not to come back. And he said, now, she said, well, what you're speaking is coming close to hate speech because you said that the Democratic Party are a bunch of Nazis. And I said, I did not say that. That is an unfair comparison to make. I would never say anything like that because the Nazis only killed six million. And the Democrats have killed 60 million in this country. Wow. <laughs> now listen, all things considered, all things considered, comparisons work. And we yeah. see that there is unconscionable death all around us. Yes. You know, they make us wear these face masks so that we can have a visual reminder that there's something that we ought to be scared of. Yeah. Well, listen, we need some visual reminders that there's something that we need to be scared of because the the most unsafe place in America is the womb That's right. of the mother. That's right. And until we fix that problem, I don't think that we can sing God Bless America as a statement. We might have to sing it as a petition, as a request, but with that much blood on the ground, will God bless us? Will he favor us? No. So what we should be doing is calling a solemn assembly, getting our, on our face before God and asking that justice would roll down yes. like a mighty stream. Yes. That's what we should be praying for. And I'm, am I supposed to pray now? Is that what we're doing? Am I dismissing in prayer? Thank you, Pastor. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to gather and in a country where we're free to speak. But Lord, I pray that you would give us a country where we're also free to live. I pray that you would bless the unborn, that you would bless the mothers who are making the decision to, to keep their child and, and to, to give them life. Father, I, I pray for justice for those who take the life of a child. 
And Lord, we know that if that justice is lacking here, it won't be in the time to come. Lord, I ask that you would bring us to repentance, that your Holy Spirit might work repentance yes. in our heart yes. Yes. And, and, and lead us to the knowledge of truth. And that truth is that that which is growing inside a, a woman's womb is a human being, not only yes, a human Father. being, but also a person. Yes. And Lord, just as we are sometimes in despair, thinking that abortion has been legal for 50 years in this country, I pray that you would remind us that slavery was legal for 200 right. before it came That's to right. an end. So, Father, how, however long it must take, I pray that your will would be done and that you would protect the lives of the unborn. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs>